Greetings, I hope you're all well wherever you are all over the world. Um, I live in Durban, South Africa, and I wanted to just share some good news with you. You know, at the moment, I don't know about you, but oh, there's just so much bad news going on that I really, um, really like to hear some good news. So I want to share some good news with you today. And part of this good news, you know, I'm seeing like a lot of young people. Now, I'm not a youngster, as you can see, but uh, um, I see a lot of young people who are desperate at this time. They just have a, a sense of anxiety, fear, and a, a lot of people are bound up in depression. A lot of people have a sense of, of a purposeless life. It's, it's like a questioning going on, like what is life about? Is, is my life just going to be moving from one disaster zone to the next? But I want to share to, with you today and say, actually, that's not the reason you're alive. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I hope that you experience some joy and peace as I'm sharing with you. Um, my, my testimony is that as a young man, I uh, also felt purposeless felt hopeless and um, you know I used to dabble in any type of kind of spirituality uh, I was I was a Rosicrucian I was a Luciferian <laughs> I used to dabble in witchcraft and uh, all sorts of weird stuff uh, any anything anything goes but you know what I what I was searching for inside me was like why do I exist what does my life have a purpose is my life going to be significant in this in this kind of like eternal um, train of humanity? Or am I just going to be like a little bubble that one day is going to burst and be gone and have no meaning or significance? Well, I want to encourage you today and say, say to you, you have significance. You were created with a divine destiny. Now you might be saying, well, I, I don't know if I believe that. Because you see, we've been taught that we kind of just literally mistakes of nature. We just something that happened, we live for a while and then we die. And everything just goes on as if we never existed. But let me just say, that is not your destiny. You, you can embrace a different destiny. You can embrace a different narrative. That actually you were created for a purpose. You had significance. There was never anyone created like you. You are actually a unique genetic being, but you're actually more than that. You're actually not just a physical being. Believe it or not, you're a spiritual being as well. And you know this because because actually, if you think about it, you have you look at yourself in the mirror and you just know, okay, that's this is my outside self, but there's something inside me. Something inside me that's restless. Something inside me that's looking for meaning and significance. And sometimes we go off and, we've, and we find that in all sorts of things, in, in, in sexuality, in extreme sports, <laughs> in radical ideologies, because, because we're looking for a sense of purpose and meaning to our lives. And let me say, you have that. You just don't know it. No one's actually just told you that. And I want to tell you that today. You are beautiful. You are unique. No one ever, ever has been created like you. You are not just some natural mistake on a treadmill to oblivion. You have significance. <laughs> and that's good news. You have a purpose. You are called to love. You are called to be loved. You are called to know love. And let me say, it took me 35 years to discover this. You know, I used to be depressed. I used to be a manic depressant. I was dabbling in all sorts of weird stuff just to find significance. I was obsessed with money. I was a businessman. But at the age of 35, I, I came to know the truth. I came to understand love. I came to understand a life of love. I came to understand <laughs> a life of grace. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that I was not lost in that negativity, depression, fear, and suicide 
that had a grip on my life. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> you see, I'm such a blessed man. <laughs> you know, I live in a beautiful country. Three beautiful children, six wonderful grandchildren, five great foster children. I've traveled all over the world. <laughs> and I know my purpose in life. And part of my purpose in life is to share the good news with you. Now, whether or not you believe it, there is a God. <laughs> you see, you just got to look at nature. Nature actually declares that there is a God. There, there, there is a creator, something, something powerful and outside of nature that put it together. Now, don't switch off, okay? Let me just say, this is a revelation. This is a truth that comes to you if you open your heart. See, we need to open our hearts to truth. We need to open our hearts and know that actually we were created. Who believes? Do you believe you were created for with an eternal purpose? Do you believe there's a plan for your life? You know, if I was in a group now, I'd say, put your hand up. If you believe there's a plan for a divine plan for your life, there's, there's something that has designated you created for a purpose. See, nothing in nature is wasted. You just don't come and live for like 80, 90 years and then just die. Nothing in there, nothing around you gives evidence that life is purposeless. Everything, even in nature, works its way out. For, for, for betterment. Having said that, everything's in decay because that's also just something atrophy. We, we need to, we can talk about that some other time. But the good news is you were created for a purpose. Do you believe that? Put your hand up if you believe it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see you, but I know a lot of you know deep down in your spirit, in your soul, that you were created for a purpose, that you had significance upon this earth. You see, now the Bible, the Bible was a book that was written thousands of years ago. Now, you don't have to believe me, you can check that out historically. And whether you like it or not, whether you choose to believe it or not, they are, they are truths, just like there are spiritual Sorry, um, physical rules and regulations, truths, you know, like jump off a building, there's a law of gravity, boom, you hit the ground. You can't get, you can't get over that. There are also spiritual truths being revealed that we've actually, as mankind's been dependent on these truths for, for thousands of years. We might not fully understand them all. Let me just say that. And we, and we are seeking understanding, we seek a revelation. But what human history reveals is that 99% of people that have ever lived believe that they were created by a loving God for a divine purpose. See, the Bible reveals that. The Bible is actually not a history it's not a set of rules and regulations. It is a love story between a God where it says he created, created humankind. Male and female, he created them in his image. You see, we are created in godly image. We have God's genetic makeup in a sense, spiritual genetic makeup. It doesn't mean literally in his image, but it means we are we are divine in that sense of we can take hold of a divine purpose for our life. We're not gods, okay, let me just say that, but we are children of God. There's a God out there that loves you. There's a God that created you in his image to reign and rule upon the earth. <laughs> See, you have a purpose. You have a purpose to love, to express God's love. You were created in the image of God, and it says in the Bible that God is love. 
Not that he loves, he is love. The very nature of God. I don't know what, you, you might have had a whole load of different religions thrown in your face. And, and to be honest with you, so did I. And I hated, you know, I tried every religion, Islam, Hinduism, Christianity. I hated them because the God they presented was a judgmental, angry God. Let me just say, God is love. He's not angry with you. He wants you to come into a relationship with him he wants you to know that he loves you he wants you to know you know there's there's a book um of uh, in one of the books in the bible called psalms it's beautiful um songs and basically it would be beautiful songs you could say and poetry and it says in one of those said it says god says i knitted you together in your mother's womb i planned you i in fact i foreknew you before even the earth existed you know, your spiritual being was known by God. You are a child of God. And God says, I put you together in your mother's womb. See, none of us are a mistake. Sometimes our mothers, our parents, you know, my mother told me, whew, she's, I'll tell you, even now, it's like cracks me up. My mother told me that she tried to abort me and my brother. We were twins. We were actually born in the end of the six months, in 1956. The, the chances of us surviving was very remote. But we did. But it was shocking when my mother said, actually, you know, at one stage I didn't want you. And I tried to abort you and I didn't. But you see, for many of us, that's, that's be, we've grown up in households where we haven't felt wanted. And some of us, our fathers have abandoned us. Or our mothers have let us down. And, and, we, and, we, and we carry those wounds let me tell you something. God never does that to you. He says, I will never abandon you. I will never leave you. And in fact, me just sharing this message with you is because God is reaching out to you in love. God loves you. God loves you. You are precious. You have a divine purpose. And again, elsewhere in, in this Bible, this ancient truth that billions and billions of people have believed and practiced See, these are not just made up things. These are things that people have lived by for thousands of years. Millions of people and millions of people have died knowing they have an eternal purpose. Do you know that? You see, you're not living just for now. You have a purpose on this earth, but you're also living for eternity. You're living for eternity. So my question for you is, do you believe that there's a plan for your life. See, the scriptures teach, it says, I know the plans I have for you, says, says the Lord God. Plans to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. You see, I want you to know today, there's hope for you. And hope is better expectation or expectation of better things to come. See, there's a future for you. It's not depression and fear and drugs, and prescription drugs and, and, and like anesthetizing yourself because of the pain of life. It's to live a full, abundant, joyful life. And even now as I speak, I pray that joy would touch you. That you would raise up out of depression and fear and anxiety. That you would take hold of this truth that you are an eternal being created for a purpose grace <laughs> grace grace means unmerited undeserved unearned favor blessing and empowerment see god wants to empower you god wants you to know today you're his child not a mistake you're not just drifting drifting through the ethos and one day just going to become nothing god wants you to know you are loved. So there's a, you were created in God's image. You were created with a plan for your life. And there was this man called Jesus. You know, you can throw aside all religiosity, but just look at Jesus. And Jesus said, I have come that they may have abundant life. Jesus said, I have not come to condemn people, but to love them. 
It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that all who believe in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And eternal life means abundant life now, starting today, that stretches off or into the infinite future. See, God, see this religious stuff where God will judge you, find fault with you, angry with you, is a lie. God loves you. So you might be saying to yourself, oh, well, it's all well and good, but how do I get that? And again, we go back to this wonderful teacher, prophet, and actually savior called Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, the way into this God plan for your life, the way into becoming a child of God is through Jesus. He actually said, he, he showed a story. He said, I am the gate. He said, you enter through me. You see, there's, one, there's, there, there's some things that get in the way. Many of us carry guilt and shame over the things that have been done to us and the things that have been done by us. You know, we've all done wrong things. We've all done stuff that we feel ashamed of. And sometimes we feel we can't have a purpose, a godly purpose in life because we're bad. You know, shame's been put on us. Guilt's been put on us. What I want to tell you today, that through Jesus, all that stuff is forgiven and forgotten. And what God says, he says, actually, you can be born again. What do you mean born again? Actually says, God says, if you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, saves you from this old mindset, this depression, this fear, this anxiety, the things you've done wrong. He says, if you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you can become alive once again in your spirit. You see, humankind, people, our body, our body, our soul, which is our personality, and spirit, which is an eternal, divine part of us, which is dead. It's dead in our sin, but alive in Christ. There you go. There's, there's a word you've got to take hold of. And we need to change our minds and believe that God loves us. Believe that we are forgiven. Believe that we don't have to carry on in our addictions, in our fears, in our wrong way of doing things. And we can live a life that is blessed. Live a life that is godly, that is, that is good. Live a life of love and grace where others look at us and say, Wow, I want that life. That is for you today. So if that is for you, if you believe you were created with a divine purpose, with a plan, and even if you don't believe it, if you want it, I want to invite you now. You see, it says to all who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that Jesus died for your sins. Now, I, that's... Something else I'm going to have to teach on some other time. But if you're just saying, I don't even know if I believe in Jesus. I don't understand all this stuff. But what I do know is I have a divine purpose. I feel this, this godly spark in me. And I want to trust in God as a father. See, Jesus came to re reveal God as a loving father. In fact, he uses the word Abba, which in, 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 in the Hebrew language means daddy. That we can call God Daddy. We can cry and say, Dad, I need help. Dad, I need provision. Dad, I, I, I want to I be in your business. <laughs> I want to be in your business of loving and sharing good news and showing grace. Setting people free. Standing up for, for, for true social justice upon the earth. See, there's a divine purpose. If you want that now, I want you to pray with me. You can just close your eyes. And you can repeat after me. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life today. 
ask you to come into my life as my Lord and my Savior. I, I yield my life to you. I submit my life to you. I turn away from my old way of thinking. And I ask you, Jesus, to reveal truth to me. For there is a godly truth. I turn away from my old wrong ways of doing things. I turn away from hurting people. I turn away from unbelief in you. And I ask you in today, Jesus. Let's keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. And now I want to pray. Holy Spirit. Spirit of God. Touch. Touch these people now in Jesus. Touch them. Touch them. Bring that divine spark of your life into them today take away hopelessness i just lift off in the name of jesus i lift off hopelessness fear depression and anxiety i break the power of addiction and i declare the abundant life of god today in your life Lord, I want to thank you for each and every person here today that has done this, that has given their lives to Jesus. My friends, <laughs> I know I've shared a lot and uh, some of it you may not understand. You know, I didn't. When I was 35, I had a miraculous healing. My body was racked with with sickness I had a miraculous healing and I went home from that healing event and I got down on my knees and I prayed that prayer and my life changed in such amazing ways so will your life today if you've prayed that prayer for the first time please I ask you to contact me please feel free to contact me there may you may have a million questions listen they don't get all answered overnight it's a journey feel free to correspond with me Tell somebody, go out and tell somebody what you've done. And if you can find a church that is, that is uh, uh, um, <laughs> free, loving, full of grace, get into some fellowship. Don't go back into that old religious stuff, that old traditional stuff. Find a church, find a little church that is full of loving people. And take your place because then the purposes of God will be worked out. And you will start to understand the plan God has for your life. I don't know who you are. But what I do know is I love you. And I love you because God loves you.